What's up YouTube? This is going to be a new format of videos that are going to be coming in and uh, I'll be opening unboxes, sort of like unboxing videos and individual cases will be linked below in the description if you're interested in seeing a specific case in bigger detail. I think in this form is better than shooting like a 45 minute episode for example where I'm gonna have to tackle all of these jobs compressed now um, in my videos the part that you guys see is basically the repair uh, and um, getting to a part where the it becomes accessible uh, what I don't show in these videos is actually the fact that um, imaging time is uh, is probably the biggest um, part of the entire project uh, depending on how some hard drives perform uh, imaging can take days uh, for flash drives I usually fast forward the reading process to like 15 times in some cases where it's a bigger capacity flash drive like 64 gigs or 128 gigs I fast forward it like 25 30 times just because it's gonna take forever these processes are put on fast forward so you guys can see the final result quicker uh, right here I got two packages that came in today from uh, regular post and I'm gonna open them up uh, I don't know what's inside but I have a feeling that this is something probably on the level of uh, flash drive and this is most likely a hard drive three and a half inch because a bulky box priority mail both of them actually a priority so let's have a look at the envelope first This is really nice. So let's have a look at what is in the actual envelope. It's a CF card, Lexar 64 gigabyte UDMA 7 compact flash, Lexar Professional, sent to us from Texas. I appreciate it. We see these quite often. They they come in frequently, not because they're bad. It's just it's a popular brand and the uh, popular device used by many so inside of this enclosure what we have is a um, printed circuit board that operates uh, four memory components uh, using this silicone motion controller so uh, we're gonna mark them remove the chips and read each chip individually save the information off of them into binary file and then reconstruct it as one volume to see the virtual image and see the virtual structure so that we can start copying files out the link to uh, a step-by-step -step process that i use will be in description because i'll shoot a separate video on this this is a cf card um, something i don't think i've done before on this channel so very good we'll get to this shortly This box has a Seagate expansion hard drive inside. It's actually called Seagate Desktop. The rest is just cables and the power bar. We're not going to use those. As well as this adapter. So, looking at this case, I can tell that the case was removed from the drive before. Okay, this uh, label here is penetrated. Unfortunately, this drive is already opened. I did not open it. You guys can see that right there, this screw right here is sticking out. That means the drive had been opened. It gets different treatment because of that, because somebody actually been inside of this drive here's the thing guys uh, if you trying to repair your drive using the information you find online including this channel um, you need to know certain things you need to first of all know that 
Hard drives cannot be opened in regular room conditions. You will contaminate them. If I was to open up a hard drive on this table right now and then perform the recovery on it and during imaging this drive would crash and die again, it would be my fault. Now, uh, this drive came in opened up. I have no ways of testing whether it's been opened in the clean room or not. I don't have any ways of confirming whether it had been anything additionally to just visual inspection uh, done to this drive or not. I don't know if somebody tried to fix it before. All I know is that finding out how recoverable this drive is versus um, finding out how recoverable the drive would be from natural causes that failed for the same reason is now different because this drive had been opened by someone who is not me. I don't know what that person did. To me, it will require certain steps to confirm that this drive is good to proceed, including cleansing the top surface of the disc. So, uh, right now, the nozzle is all the way up. Just gonna fire it up up here. And once the temperature reaches 700 degrees, I'll start suspending it down and uh, that will begin melting the solder. Okay, the first chip is good. Chip is good. So chip two is down, chip three goes in. I'll show you the steps um, that you can take to figure out uh, the condition of the printed circuit board and if there's any way to perform the repair well, I'll explain how that can be done. The drive um, doesn't spin up so we're gonna test the board and we'll start with the board so to take the board apart uh, from this device we're gonna have to use a T6 by 60 screwdriver once uh, all the six screws are out we're gonna have a look at the back of the PCB. If the wrong power supply was plugged into the device and the unit stopped working, chances are you fried the board. And that's exactly what's in the notes for this case. A couple of things I want to pay attention to is just uh, look and inspect the board visually. If you don't have access to a microscope, just try to get as close to it as possible. First thing you should always do on any hard drive if uh, you see that these um, pins for the preamplifier are corroded uh, take something like a race like an eraser and just brush them up but they're all nice and shiny now right here the next thing is you're gonna need um, a multimeter continuity test is this logo right here if the contacts are shorted out it's going to make the sound. What we have to find here is the uh, diodes for the device. Usually they will be uh, um, somewhere near the power connector of the board. So we have two of them. Okay, so you can see that this diode is shorted out and the second diode is not shorted and it gives us the reading of 0.574. I'm going to go ahead and remove this 
uh, diet right now. I just removed the diet from there and now we're actually getting a reading of 0 0.666. and it gives access to the utility. Just looked at the drive. The drive was a uh, Mac drive used with Mac. It was an external drive, but it was used with Mac. It was formatted for HFS type of uh, file system, which is great because the entire catalog was captured just now. I have a full duplicate off of it. Now, analytics on HFS um, catalogs, they do tend to take a little longer than MFT records. So that's gonna take a few minutes once it's ready I just have to put check boxes next to the folders that I want to image and begin imaging process it's a lot of information to grasp if you especially if you haven't worked on these tools before it's uh, it's a lot of information um, to kind of um, piece together in your head especially if you don't have the tool in front of you once you have the tool in front of you things will definitely be much much easier the only problem with this tool is that it's expensive as hell but it does magic if there is magic with bringing information back it's this thing unless unless you can get a hold of doc brown and he's gonna show you the time machine that's gonna take you back to the time before the drive died and copy it easier other than that this is the best thing to use to bring the information back from the dead hard drives thank you for tuning in hit like subscribe to this channel if you haven't already have a wonderful day and thanks again for watching